I am your host, Leah Demba, and you are listening to the Oracle On Purpose podcast, where we help intentional leaders clarify their purpose and next steps to create a work and life of significance. Hey, everyone. Oh, my gosh. Just want you to know you did this. That's right. You did this. You created this amazing, frustrating maddening, amazing, beautiful, wonderful, fantastic, abundant year, all on your own. What do I mean? Well, here's the thing. We can find ourselves stuck in a place where we want to look outside. We want to say that what we're experiencing is someone else's fault. It's the environment. It's the community, it's the government, it's all these things, it's the neighbors, <laughs> it's the family. And when we get right down to brass tacks, whatever you're experiencing right now, good, bad, or indifferent, you did it. You created it. And I want you to look at that from a place of celebration and find out if you are blaming yourself or blaming other ones or even shaming yourself for not reaching some goal that you put out there and you're leaning into 2022 thinking, oh my gosh, you know, will I be able to make it? If I didn't make it last year, will I make it this year? I still have all of this angst for not having reached some sort of milestone that I made up in my own mind. If that's you and you're thinking, yeah, I I don't feel like I am where I want to be. I'm anxious or frustrated Just remember that you did that too. You did it. But here's the thing. That is not something that needs to be the end all be all of everything. That's not something that needs to be a reason to stop. That you did it. I did this. It's my fault. Feeling is actually fertile ground. It's fertile ground because Inside of those feelings, inside of those emotions, inside of that frustration is the secret to what you really do desire and how you can really create it is by acknowledging it, right? Seeing the power that you have, you, that's what I'm saying, you, the you, you are without anybody else's help that you have in manifesting and creating what you want in your life. And even if what you are creating doesn't look how you want it, but it's giving you what you wanted, then you are also responsible for that. And that's a good thing, because what that means is you don't like what you see. You can change it. You have the power to shift and change what you are experiencing based on what you are focusing on. And. Um, I am really excited to share a quick story from a call I had today with my clients about just this point, about understanding that inside of that angst is this fertile ground of possibility and potential and seeds, right? Seeds to sell us, arrows, if you will, to tell us this is the way. This is not the way. This is the way, right? So when we get in our heads about, I did this or they did this to me and this is all happening from a place of feeling sad, like I said, frustrated, uh, disappointed maybe even in what you've created. Just give yourself permission to look at it slightly differently and ask what resources do you need to pull in what you're anxious or depressed or frustrated or wishing for? It's you. You, you're the primary resource. You, what you have in here, this amazing, powerful, creative mind that you are, it is there working all the time. Doesn't take holidays, doesn't take weekends, um, doesn't take sick days. It's always working. It is always working. And that is the fun part of the story I want to share. I'm Leah Dunlap, Oracle on Purpose, and I help my clients to understand what their purpose is and how to find and follow that purpose to greater prosperity. So one of the reasons we bring this subject up when our calls is that 
when we are focusing on the negative side of this power, and that's what it is, it's power that we have, when we are focused on the negative side of that, it starts to create a downward spiral. It starts to feed on itself. And because we're focused on what we didn't get or where we're not yet or what we should have had, we lose the energy of what we did achieve, what we were capable of creating, even when what we created seems like it was a negative. So here's the example of a client who is working on some incredible things. So we start off the call and we always check in and do celebrations, which you probably have come to see from me is pretty common. And as we were doing our celebrations before we started, she said that she was feeling out of it, that she was kind of in this funk. And she went even as far as saying, I, I mean, I don't want to say it, but I almost feel like I'm depressed. And then she jumped into celebration and she's listing off all of these incredible things that are happening just a few weeks. Like the last time we talked to each other was the middle of you know, December. So we're talking like three or four weeks. And these are things that she's achieved that she's put effort into. OK, think about this. She's put effort into them. So what happens is we have this maybe internal, what do I say, scorekeeping system, right? So it's like, well, I wanted to do all of these things, X, Y, Z, and I did X and Y, but I didn't do Z. And somehow there can be this faulty wiring that happens where all we're focused on is the Z, not the X and the Y. And that was what happened. So part of what I wanted to share was how you can actually use those moments as fertile ground for opening up opportunity and possibility and energy and excitement. If you look at it and say, oh, well, actually, I created whatever the situation is because of something else. And here's how that looked for her. She had all of these things, like I said, great things happening, you know, develop uh, real estate deals and partnerships and all kinds of amazing things going on. And yet this one feeling was kind of still hanging out, like what was she going to do next? And she was kind of feeling confused. One of the things that happened was her website crashed. And as she was explaining that that was one of the negative things, I, I chuckled because in our last call, or our last time together, she had mentioned that she needed to change the whole thing. And she wasn't happy with it. And she really had this resistance to having it out there. And it crashed. And it's not out there right now. So she has to go back in and make those changes. And that kind of creative transaction with the universe is what we focus on in the Master Creators Guild. With the caveat that we're intentionally setting the groundwork for what we want to have happen rather than living from that emotion place and letting that guide what happens next, right? So the clarity piece is to come clean with yourself. What do you, what's, what are you really trying to achieve? Because sometimes in that negative experience, the thing that you're not paying attention to is the very thing you asked for. And that was the very thing she'd asked for. So now, of course, it's not necessarily how she wanted it to come about. And being able to recognize that, yes, she did indeed put the brakes up, right? She did indeed call the, call the thing off for a minute because she wasn't sure what she was going to put in it and all of those things. But then that means she's in control, right? She's in the co-creative driver's seat, if you will, when she recognizes that. And as we started to uncover some of the other things that were going on, there is this thread and there's these pieces of what she was struggling with that were actually there for her to focus on them, right? To recognize and focus on them. And so as we looked at everything she was thinking from the, the onset was a negative, there was always a piece in that where it was actually working on her behalf, fulfilling something she did create in her head about how she wanted things to go. So when we are in a state where we find ourselves frustrated, anxious, agitated, agitation is a really good one. Agitation, I think, is one of the ones that it's it's not enough, right, of a of a pain point always 
for us to pay attention. So it's, it's a good opportunity if you find yourself agitated. That's almost like the early warning signal, right? Think of your agitation as an early warning signal that some piece of what's going on right now is out of sync. And if you can listen to what it is you'd rather be experiencing, right? What would you rather be experiencing? And how can you call that in instead? How can you start to shift your focus, not on what's agitating you, but on what you want instead of that thing that's agitating you. And that shift can help you to start to pull in new opportunities, new connections, new resources, because you're now aware and you're you're clearing the channels we talked about today on my call. You're clearing the channel so you can hear that intuitive guidance system giving you direction, right? So what we have, what we've created That's us. We did that, right? You did that. You created it. So you can create something different. It becomes about being intentional, being on purpose, knowing with clarity, right? With clarity, what it is you want instead. And then holding the vision of that as the thing to focus on doing something about. Right. Being participating. Right. Because we're co-creative doing something about the thing that you do want that shifts. Right. That uses the seed of that that undertow of what was going wrong, per se, and uses the seed and develops it into what you do want. So we're gardeners. Right. We're co-creating. We're planting seeds. We're always planting seeds. That's the other piece I like to share with everybody all the time. We are always planting seeds. You are constantly planting seeds. And some of them come to full fruition, right? Some of them are weeds, some of them are flowers, but we're always planting seeds. So I encourage you as we head into the new year to look back at what you've created. And rather than judging the creations, right? Whether it's you made it to X, Y, and Z, or you didn't, you fell quote unquote short, Understand that what you created is yours, that the capacity to create anything at all is a gift and that you absolutely can indeed choose to create something amazing intentionally, right? Rather by rather than by default or in spite of something. It's the idea that we hone in on that gift that we have to be co-creators to use our minds and all that we are to create a life that's purposeful and prosperous. And that is easy, not always simple, right? Like sometimes it takes effort, but the, but the flow of what we've created, you didn't have to think about it. It just happened, right? When you put that intention in and something went awry, it's really funny how we can't always see that that action is just a natural progression of the thoughts and the feelings that we've been habitually holding for the past days, months, weeks, and maybe even years. So the question becomes as you step into a new year, because it always feels like the time to reflect and review and renew what you're going to do next year, is what do you want to be creating? And whatever that is, Now is your chance to create it. Create it now. Choose now to take everything that that the last year held for you as a blessing, a blessing of what you do want to continue having or what you prefer to move away from and what is in that that you do desire instead. All right. So that's my share for today. I wanted to share that because I when I was on that call, I'm like, this is so common that people can get stuck holding one of the things they didn't receive against everything they've created and forget you did it all. Every piece of it. It's all yours. So enjoy this year. Stick around. We have lots of videos to share coming up. But for now, I just wanted to share that message. Hopefully, whoever needs to hear it is hearing it right now. Whatever you created, good or bad, you did that. You did that 
And that's a great thing because you can do anything else if you change your mind. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Oregon on Purpose show. If you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate you leaving a comment. Also, you can subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. If you'd like to get clear on your highest vision and next steps, go to oracleonpurpose.com. See you next week.